gorgeous and welcome to my channel. I'm Kapanish Manga and this is how I do things. The show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things and I can take it as entertainment or use it as advice. Take it, don't take it, use it, don't use it at all. You know why? You know why? Because me, what? done. I'm no professional. I'm no professional at all. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Let me know if you can get, oh goodness, live, live, darlings, live. I have a feeling I'm going to have to do this intro all over again. Can, can y'all hear me? Are we on the same page? Are we togetherness? Yes? No? No? Yes? Family? <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's see. Good morning. Yay! Okay, that was awkward. So now I'm going to have to redo this whole beginning just because I'm just like, it was awkward now. Now we're just going to have to redo the whole thing because I'm just like, nah, I'm not a fan of the entry. Of this intro? No, let's do it again. Rewind. Hey, gorgeous, and welcome to my channel. I'm Kapanish Shimange, and this is how I do things. A show where you send me your questions, and I let you know how I would do things. And I can take it as entertainment, or use it as advice. Take it, don't take it. Use it, don't use it at all. Listen, do what you will with it. Because me, moi, ek, I, not a professional. Not a professional whatsoever. I'm just letting you know what I can do if I was in your shoes. Hi, knees. That's just how it rolls. Let me know. I, I used to see in the comment section that you guys used to say that you used to repeat the intro with me. So do you sometimes just say the the intro with me? Just sometimes on time. Hey, use it, don't use it. <laughs> I know it just happened. It just it's got a ring to it, doesn't it? Just got a ring to it. That's just how it is, guys. Today we are chatting about setting standards in relationships. Honestly. You have to set relationship standards. And I know a lot of us are thinking to ourselves, he must have a car. He must have his own house. He needs to be making this much money. And we think those are standards. Let's get this one out of the way. I'm jumping straight into it, into the deep end. Money is a stupid standard. Stupid. I said it. Stupid standard. You know why? Because money in my life, I've seen and I've learned two things about money. The first thing is that money is paper, which means that paper can burn and money burns. No one is immune to going broke. Not a single person. Billionaires have gone broke. Millionaires have gone broke. Dynasties have fallen. No one is immune to their money burning. No one. And when I mean burning, I mean just things going wrong, losing your job, things collapsing. It has happened to it has happened to people all over the place. You may be highly qualified, in demand, CEO, and the next day wake up and be sweet bugger all, broke as a joke, asking your friends to buy you bread. No one's immune to losing money. And once your man, who you set a standard for saying he must have money. Once he's lost his money, all you're left with is his character and his clothes. So he may still be wearing Gucci and Versace, but you might not actually like the man without the money. The second thing about money is that it is fluid. It flows. Money flows. So if money is constantly flowing in to someone's life and flowing out of someone's life. And if you want to be with someone and set money as a standard, then it should not be that he has money, but he has the ability to make money. Because you have to be the type of person who knows how to make money flow in your direction. Because money is constantly flowing. Even if you make the money, it flows from your bank account to an investment account that's actually held under an investment company. So money is constantly moving. So if you want to set a standard according to money, remember those two things. Money burns and money is fluid. So having money doesn't mean you always have it because it can flow in the opposite direction and a man might not know how to make it all back. Just saying. All right, so we are live today from South Africa in Pretoria and here with us today we have Dion. Good morning, Khala. Um, Tonolo is also here with us. KM Tembelita is also here. Sylvie, good morning. Riabe 
Lidi Le Radi Chief. Good morning. No Monde is also here with us. Good morning. Good to see you. You're always here. I love it. Um, Kholiso is also here with us as well. Kala, um, Magdalene is also here. We have Mupi. Hi. I have a sibling with the name Mupi, right? I'm so happy. I love that because people usually say it wrong. They're like Mupi. But I love it, obviously. Family. So your family. Just let's just say that you are family, okay? Jessica is here as well. Tepo Londiwe is here. Karabo Lindy uh, Lindy Decebo. Good morning. Um, Smangela is also here. Owe to Jasmine. Oh my goodness, the family is growing. Um, uh, Dolores is here as well. Diana Ntavi. Oh my word, Koki Ayanda. Good morning, good people. So many new people. Good morning. Um, Mabat was also here. Good morning, darling. Puloko. Um, Busi, it's so good to see you. It's been a while. Edna is here as well. MJ, Rose. Goodness, the morning party and the family is growing and it makes a girl happy. You're here just to hear about standards, ain't you? You want to know? How do you set standards and why is it important to set standards in a relationship? You can get yourself in so much trouble for not setting standards in your relationship. Eddie is here. Eddie, are you a girl or a guy? I just want to know. Don't worry if you're a guy. You're not the only one. Susan! Susan's here as well. Um, Martina, good morning. What time is it? Where are you? Uh, where are you joining us from? What side of the world are you on? And welcome to the morning party. Yes, this is me and the lady in the red dress. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to the morning party. So here's the thing about standards. I have heard this line over and over again that you show people how to treat you. And you will get yourself into so much trouble in a relationship because you're scared to set standards with the person that you are with. If you are scared to set standards with the person that you are with, you'll end up being in a relationship with a great guy who ends up being a straight pee-pee to you because you haven't really shown him how you want to be treated. So here's five reasons why it is important that you set standards while dating in a relationship to make sure that you have a chance of having a good long and happy relationship with everyone so um lerato raquel and precious everybody who's joining us now good morning welcome thank you for coming through number one remember that it gets better as we go because point number five is fire number one your standards protect your value when you enter into the room babes when you enter into the room, understand that you bring value as a basic, as a minimum. God did not make any mistakes when he made you. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. He knows you. He put value in you. The fact that you're alive, you're breathing, you've got kidneys, you've got a heart, you've got toes, you've got teeth, you've got whatever it is that you have. You come with value. The brain that you have, you come with value. You give him emotions. You make his heart race. You make him feel feelings. You make him feel alive. All of those things are value. Even before you've had your first kiss, just know that as soon as you walk into the door, the value in the room, it goes up. Because you have value. It's a standard. You don't even have to say, oh, why am I valuable? Because you're alive. You already have value. Because God created you. He made no mistakes with you. You have value. That's just the starting point. That's where we at. That's where we start. And if you don't set standards and expectations of the person, then you stand to damage that value. And it means that you're not protecting that value. If you have something of value in your life, if you have a laptop, for example, you know that you can't drop the laptop, that you need to treat it in a specific way, that you need to plug it into the computer. Those are all standards for it to continue to operate, for you to protect its value. Because if you don't charge it, if you drop it on the floor, if you wash it with water, it breaks, it loses its value. And the same thing happens to us as people. If we don't set standards, then we break and we lose our value. If we're not spoken to correctly, if the respect that we give is not given back to us, if we aren't treated correctly, or if we're not treated with respect, then our value drops. And that's what happens if we don't set standards. 
we start to believe that our value drops. We start to believe that we aren't treated well and our minds start to deteriorate in terms of how we see ourselves, our belief in ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, our self-esteem. All of these things are affected because we don't set standards with the people that we are with. Number two, your standards means that your mean your 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 needs are met. What are our needs as human beings? So for a man, sex might be a standard. That I'm a man. I need my needs to be met. And the standard is put forward because he feels as though I need to have sexual intimacy with the person because it makes me feel wanted as a man. It makes me um it, it meets my needs in terms of how I feel physically. So that's a standard that he sets. But you can set your own standards in that I, I need us to communicate on a daily basis, you know. And, and in terms of it makes you feel secure. It makes you feel like you're an important part of the relationship, that you're important to him, that you need to feel needed in a relationship. You want to participate in his career and knowing what's going on in his life and being supportive. He needs to create space for you in your life. You need to feel like you're not an option. These are all needs that we have that how do I, how do I know I'm secure? How do I feel secure in a relationship? Those are things that are needs for us. And if we don't set them as a standard, they won't be met. And if you don't set a standard that I'd like you to call me, you know, let's, let's touch base on a daily basis. So that you know that I'm not an option. I am important to him. I'm a valuable part in this in his life. You ask, hey, please call me tomorrow. Just give me a call tomorrow. And you continue to ask until he realizes that this thing is a standard. It's something that she expects of me every single day. Because one of the problems that we have with standards and with expectations is that we don't communicate them. And then we're setting the brother up for failure. Shem skips in. He must just smell that this thing is a standard. No, if it, is sta if it is a standard, it is communicated, right? So if you have a standard and there's a reason behind your standard, it number one, it needs to be communicated and then thereafter, then it will be carried through. So if you don't set a standard, that need shall not be met. If it is your standard that, yo, honey, I do not have sex before marriage, it is a standard that you have set that should you want sexual intimacy, then we must get married. It is a standard. It is set. And he knows that if he wants to have that type of intimacy with you, then he needs to raise the standard of your relationship from dating to marriage. But that's a standard that you set. Your needs won't be met if you don't set certain standards. So number three, you set the bar. That if you do not, you know, if you go to an amusement park, if you go to um, any place where there are rides, they will let you know that if you are not taller than this line, then you cannot go on this ride. It's the same with you. If you, as a man, cannot meet this line here, then you cannot enter. Uh, SARS, SARS, that's just how it works. This is me, all right? This is my standard. This, it, I mean, I have an aunt who doesn't date short men. So she literally has a line. This is like, if the, if the brother does not meet this line here, can't happen. That's one of her standards. But for everybody else, the standard may be that, okay, fine, brothers, my standard is that you either need to believe in God or that you are on a journey to God. Here's the thing about a standard. Once you've set a standard, it's your responsibility to keep it right. And if you set a standard that, you know, Jesus needs to be in your life, you as a woman need to be so far deep in God that a man has to go through God to get to you. That's how you set a standard. A standard is something you uphold as a woman. So if you say that a man must be Christian to be with you, even if a man enters the door and he is not Christian, you need to be so far deep into God that he needs to discover God first in order to discover you. That's how good standards are set. If you have a standard, it is that it is a non-negotiable. It is that we can only start dating if this is in place. And if you bend the rules, then it's not a standard anymore. 
It's not, if you break it, it's a negotiable. It's a nice to have. It's a desire. So if you say that, brothers, it's either you're with Jesus or on your way to Jesus for us to be in a relationship, then you have to make sure that that standard is set by making sure that we don't date until this requirement is met. When you go to an amusement park, you can talk till your face is blue and say, I really want to go on that ride. I will hold on really tight. I will do it. You can't. They know that the way that this ride is set up, you can't buckle yourself in if you're too small. You will fall out. You will die. And that's the, that's the way that the ride is set up. You need to be set up in a way that if a man does not meet these standards, he won't survive a relationship with me because this is the way I'm set up. That's just how it is. You need to set yourself up in such a way that if your standards are not met, the relationship won't work out. That's just how you are. You're the one who sets the standards. You are the one who polices your own standards. You're the one who makes sure that you always meet them. So Dion is saying, God can send me any seventh day Christian except an Adventist man. <laughs> That's your standard, babe. That is your standard. My one standard has always been and still is a man after God's heart. Every time I got someone who wasn't meeting my standard in a relationship, the relationship was a wreck. I pray for a man and God blessed. Yes, Hala. I like this guy. You mentioned this guy dropping hints about this brother. We like this guy. We genuinely like him. Guys, am I the only one who likes this guy that, that Hala has lately? Hi, Shem, he's the one. Can understand this as ladies that if a man can't make an effort to meet your standards, then he just doesn't deserve you. Very true. Very true. And remember, like we said, money is a crap standard, a cuck standard. And, you know, it's a terrible one. But there are standards that have to do deal with a person's character. That if these certain things are in place, then your relationship will always work out. Material things come and they go. But if you have good character, if you have a good personality, if you have good bones, if the man is made of good stuff, then your relationship will always work out with or without the material things in your life. All right, let's wrap this up. Number four is that your standards are your responsibility. You need to be set up in a way that a relationship cannot work without these standards. For example, if you know that in your house, you believe that both a man and a woman are responsible for keeping a house clean, then the way that you are set up and the way that you conduct yourself, it is an expectation in a relationship that as we go through the day, as we go through the months together in a house, that the house needs to be clean by the both of us, that people don't leave things lying around. And if you see that that standard or expectation has not been met, it is your responsibility to raise that problem and to say that we cannot continue without the standard being met. The way that this ride is set up, it will not go down. Nothing will happen unless the standard is met. You set the standard. It is your responsibility to keep it. What we sometimes do as women is that we make it his responsibility to keep our standards. And that's not how things work. You, babes, have to set the standard and you have to uphold it. It is your responsibility to let the brother know that, yo, the standard is not being met. If you want a praying man, then you should be a praying woman so that that standard can always be upheld. If you say that you want a, you want a relationship that is based on God in dating, and I know that this has happened Let's just say this guy wants to have a date with you on Sunday morning. And you go to church every Sunday morning. Even if you're at home, you're just like, I go to TV church. YouTube church is just as good for me. Then you cannot bend on that because that is a standard. That if you want to be with me on Sunday until one, I am with Jesus. So if you want to be with me, you have to come with me to church or you have to watch YouTube with me you know church on tv with me that's how you uphold the standard but the day babe the day that you decide that hey let's go for brunch or let's go for breakfast at 9 a.m on a sunday morning it's no longer a standard so it's your responsibility to uphold the standard it's not his you give him a little chance a little, just a little chance that man will run he will run with that opportunity Number five is the biggest one. And my husband doesn't like it when I say this, but like I've received this advice from 
a very important woman in both of our lives. And she says, you must train your horse. I love the saying. Me, I love the saying. <laughs> I love it. So basically, you train people on how to treat you. If you want to be spoken to in a specific way, if you want to be treated in a specific way, if you want if you want to be spoken to in a specific way, then you set the standard for it and you make sure that the person on the other side does not continue unless that standard is met. So I grew up in a house with a father who loves to spoil my mom and he does it randomly. He doesn't need to have a Valentine's Day to have it. He doesn't need anything to have it. So I grew up with that as a standard. And what I have done as a result of that is I love to spoil my husband. And I spoil him with whatever way I can. I bake cake for him. Um, that's what, uh, my way of spoiling him. You know, doing unnecessary but nice things for him. And when the money is there, you know, just buying him shoes or buying him panties or whatever it may be just to spoil him. I love to spoil my hubby. Um, and I like to spoil him when we were still dating as well random massages and all of those things but here's the thing it can often be taken for granted and be set as when something is a standard sometimes people can take that standard for granted and just it's just always there so when you set a standard it needs to come from you first and then reciprocated by the other person when you set a standard for respect you say that i expect to be spoken to in this way and treated in this way you treat him that way and then you let him know that I expect you to treat me in the same way I treat you. I treat you with respect. I expect you to treat me with respect as well. I like to spoil you. I expect you to spoil me in return. So a lot of the times, a standard is something that has to go both ways. No double standards. What double standards means is that I expect you to spoil me, but I don't have to spoil you. And that's a double standard. Where it applies to one person, but it doesn't apply to the other. I personally believe that standards should go both ways. If I speak to you in a specific way, or if you expect me to treat you in a specific way, you should treat me that same way too. Standards should be upheld by both parties. If I expect you to spoil me, then I should be spoiling you as well. Whatever way I see fit to spoil you. And that's the way that it is. That have the same standards for both parties. And that's how beautiful relationships work that you lead by example if good communication is a standard if i say that i don't want you to shout at me then you cannot shout at your man and raise your voice at him if i am a calm person in arguments then i expect you to also be calm when we argue that it is not good for you to shout at me when i don't shout at you you have to make sure that the standards meet and they are matched and that they are go that they go both ways that is how standards can be upheld in a relationship. All right, so let's see what's going on. The way my son loves smiling. Oh, Limon. Hi. Oh, boy, he's six months. I should bring baby. She must just come sit with me sometimes in the live. No, I'm so broody. Grace, wow, the train, um, train your horse part. I know it's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious, but I love it. I love the saying. So, Tiro, um, let's see, Glory. Glory is saying, train your horse. That is so true. I know it's the older ladies who like saying it, but I think it's like the best, the best advice. Um, uh, Oona is saying, finally figuring out what time we start. It's taken me all the way back to the start. Okay, cool. What time is it in your side of the world? Maybe it is the time difference that's making it a bit different. So I love giving and I love to be given. One thing have um, I have said for myself, I love that we need to stop um, being rehab centered for poorly raised people, be it man or woman. I agree. And it's about setting that standard in that in a relationship, let's both have open communication. Let's make sure that we're not passive about things. And that's something that I'm learning as well. But we need to make sure that I support you equally in the way that you support me. But at, at the same time, Dion, I think that, and it might be a bit off topic, when when I entered this relationship with my husband, he was my rehab center. And it's an unfortunate thing that he found me in a specific situation, but everybody goes through seasons. But the most important thing is that both parties should be working for change. If you meet somebody who comes with their baggage, that person should also want to fix their own baggage. Not that you're the only one who fixes their baggage. If I'm here to support you, you must also support yourself to get better. 
That's just how I'm saying. My main standard is that we always have communication no matter how tough. So talking about our issues is an important must. It's an, it's a must. It, that is so important. That is so true. Oh, I made it to the live for the first time. Uh, Sidzani, oh my gosh, we're about to leave. We're about to call it quits. I always feel like right before we end the chat, there's somebody who, who just enters right at the end. Honey, I'm about to conclude this conversation. I'm so sorry. Okay, let me just read one or two more comments. Okay, I remember when I met my husband, he didn't believe um in birthdays i love birthday and celebrating it so i continued celebrating his birthday and now he celebrates and believes in birthdays as well now that's the thing right i think it's a, it, it is like that we grow up in different houses we grow up in different things and we have different expectations based on how our lives have been so if you're with a person who doesn't believe in celebrating birthdays or if you're with a person who doesn't believe in celebrating valentine's you buy him flowers you buy him a cake on on his birthday and you continue to do it until you real until that point where you're just like i want you to treat me the way i treat you um that it's that important to you that you continue to celebrate it with or without him that's how you keep a standard i love that um let's see grace let's see train your horse double standards are the worst they are the worst tenor. they are the worst um compromising because you don't want to be alone only brings you what you don't want exactly it just leads to unhappiness you lower your standards when you compromise. That's why it's important that if you want your standards to be upheld, you need to be the one to set them by leading by example. All right, good people. That is, oh my gosh, no time. No time is lost when you are waiting on the Lord. None whatsoever, Jasmine. That is a beautiful one. So many new names. Nicole, Glory. I'm loving this. Hope that you guys are here to stay for the morning party, especially during this live week. Thank you so much for joining Please do one thing. Share this video with a friend. Send it via email. Tweet it. Put it on Instagram. Take a screenshot. Share it. Just share it with one other woman because it's important that we learn to set standards in our relationships so that we can have good, healthy, and happy relationships. It's been an amazing conversation with you ladies. Thank you so much for joining. Have a beautiful day. Good night to you if it's in the evening and good morning to you if it's in the morning and good afternoon if you're somewhere else in the world. Until next time. Toodles.